Hey, it's Don Skaggs again with Empowered Inventing, the one place where we try to help you help other people by taking your great innovation, the right opportunity, mixing that with sound wisdom to turn them into real things like products and businesses. Now today, I, I want to um, uh, talk about a question uh, that sometimes I'll hear a lot from inventors and entrepreneurs, and that is, when should you file your patent? Uh, and I see way too many inventors that that's the number one first step thing they want to do. They've got a great idea and the first thing they want to do is rush out and file that patent. Usually they don't know the difference between a provisional patent and a non-provisional patent and they just want to rush to the patent office or rush to the attorney's office uh, with a lot of money and say here make me a patent and they don't even know and sometimes they'll end up uh, not doing the provisional which is uh, a whole other step you can do, uh, but a lot of times they'll, sometimes when they do know about the provisional, they'll even just want to rush and file that. Now, uh, if you're not familiar, the difference between the provisional and the non-provisional, the provisional uh, patent application, it kind of holds your foot in the door for 12 months, holds it in, your foot in the door for a year. It's where you're putting your stake in the ground and saying, I am the inventor of this new idea, this new thing, uh, and it gives you 12 months to uh, uh, before you have to file what's called the non-provisional patent, which is the big, you know, the actual, you know, full-blown patent application. But that 12 months gives you one year to answer one question, and that is, will it sell? And it is the fastest 12 months of your life, this provisional patent period. So I see a lot of inventors that want to rush, and the first thing they want to do is rush and file that provisional patent. But there's some important steps that you really need to take before you, uh, before you prepare to file that, before you actually file that non-provisional. And uh, we have a program, if you go to our website, empoweredinventing.com, uh, uh, or, or kyinventors.org, um, uh, we, we, we talk a lot about and teach a lot of something what we call idea steps. And it's a certain number of steps that you want to take between just coming up with the right idea to actually uh, to becoming a successful inventor entrepreneur and selling it in the marketplace. Now, uh, in those steps, the filing a provisional patent is not step one. Absolutely. And a lot of people think that's the first thing they've got to do. Why is it not number one? Because you need to be able to hit the ground running when you file that. Because again, fastest 12 months of your life. It will go by in a snap. And, and you're, uh, you know, a lot of inventors will come back to me and they'll say, well, well Don, uh, what, you know, what if somebody beats me to it? What if somebody files early? Yeah, that can happen. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But you want to be able to hit the ground running when you do it because, again, that 12 months goes by really fast. Now, that being said, those steps you take before filing the provisional don't need to be a 10-year, decade-long process. It needs, they need to be very, very fast iterations. And I almost think it's sort of a good thing because even if you're wanting to rush and file that provisional, if you know you have to do these things first, I think it will really kind of light a fire under you to get those things done to file that. Because, again, one of the biggest fears I see, inventors are worried that they're going to have somebody steal their idea. And, you know, you can let fear, fear of bad things happening, fear of somebody beating you to the punch, uh, you can let fear itself drive very bad decisions in inventing and in business. I've seen it done. I've, I've uh, fell prey to it just like everybody else has sometimes. Uh, but, you know, you, you shouldn't do that. It's, it's not don't let fear drive your decisions. And, and filing too early with a provisional patent can beat it. Now, yes, there is a risk. Could someone beat you if they file, too, if they file before you? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, it's all, you know, they file too early and, uh, you know, they beat you to the patent office. But there's also a risk if you file too early. Sure, there's a risk of getting it stolen if you, if you, don't, um, if you don't file, you know, before someone else. There's also a risk that if you file too early, that your idea might not be fully cooked yet. Have you even built, tested, and then rebuilt after it failed several times your Frankentype? And uh, check out our other videos if you want to know what a Frankentype is. Uh, it's the first part of a prototype. It's where you're testing to check to, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're teaching yourself, uh, is this going to work like I think it is in my head? And uh, so, if, if you've not done that, there might be all these changes that would go into the provisional patent. Have you done a demo type? Uh, demo type is where you've built a prototype and now you're showing it to the public. And uh, before you get this demo type built, it's got to be pretty, it's got to be functional, and at the same time you're learning about the market, you're not publicly disclosing yet, and that is the one thing you can't, you don't want to do before you file your provisional patent, is publicly disclose. But you're getting all these things just ready to do. But you'll learn all these things in this step, these steps, uh, leading up to filing it. All these, these the, the prototype building, the understanding of your market, and that will drive what the invention is, how it works, and ultimately what is going to go into that provisional patent. And if it's not in there, guess what? It's not covered. And if it's critical because you're saying, oh, well, we suddenly discovered this when we were building it, or we just suddenly discovered this when we were learning about the market, and now you're like, oh, well, now I gotta file it again, or I gotta file a new one, I gotta file a different one. So the risk can actually be greater if you file too early with the wrong product, because wrong products fail, and the, then the patents aren't worth the paper that they're written on. So, so you definitely want to be prepared. Again, don't take a long time with this. These are fast editor. We teach how to, how to do these quick and how to get to that filing a provisional patent quickly. Uh, uh, but you have, you have got to uh, be prepared because when you do it, it's a really fast 12 months. It's going to vet your market. And before you spend the bigger bucks on the non-provisional patent, you definitely want to know that you've got everything in there and everything's cooked and is it going to sell? Uh, you know, nobody wants to dance with the wallflowers. Uh, and, you know, and while there is a risk of, yeah, somebody could beat me to the punch, think of, think of it uh, before me and file it before me and, and you know, they've, they've beat me to the patent office. Yeah, there's a risk. And you have to be cognizant of that risk, but don't let that overwhelming fear drive you because I, most of my products that I launched, my inventions that became products, that became launches, that became part of my businesses, they had copycats, but only after. People only wanted to try to copy me after they were successful. When it was just an idea, when it was not out there in the marketplace, or it wasn't out in the marketplace and it wasn't popular and you weren't seeing it everywhere, nobody cared. They just really didn't. So, so keep that in mind and follow the steps and be prepared. You have to be strategically smart uh, uh, as you're doing this. Uh, I, I've watched so many inventors that have rushed to file their PPA. That's provisional patent application, by the way. So that's that first one that you that's your foot that's your scary boy dog sign saying, okay, I can put patent pending on this and I've got one year before I file the non-provisional. I've seen a lot of inventors, they'll file that PPA too early, only to come back to me 12 months later or 11 months later and saying, Don, I'm just, I'm not ready yet. You mean you've not, you, you've not launched yet? You've not s tested your market yet? You've not took your demo type out and demonstrated? No, no, I, I, sure I filed it 11 months ago, but I just wasn't ready to do that yet. And now it's month 11, and guess what? They've either got to file their non-provisional, which costs a lot of money, and you don't want to spend a ton of money on an unproven product that you don't have to. And they are, or they just have to, you know, 
uh, come up with something different, something new, a new provisional patent to file, and maybe even a whole new invention uh, or a whole new product. And sometimes they've learned so much that they have to file uh, again because it's a completely different product now that they've gone through the process. So work hard, work fast, but and be ready to file your PPA, your provisional patent application, at the right time. Well, I hope this is helpful. Uh, again, I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. If you want to learn more, go to our website, empoweredinventing.com. Uh, like, subscribe, share this with somebody you think that could be helped by it. And I will look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, maybe one of our online classes, or on the next video.